I was doing some research over the weekend and I came across a study that was talking about how, and this is not PRI research, uh, it's the pre-existent vertebral rotation in the human spine is influenced by body position. And they were talking about three different positions, uh, standing up, supine, which is lying face up, and then quadruped, which was on your hands and knees. And in all three positions, in all, uh, it was shown that in all three positions, the mid and lower thoracic vertebrae, so this is only the thoracic spine, so uh, the mid and thoracic vertebrae from, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, from eight on down, but even above that a little bit, they all had a predisposed inclination to rotate to the right. So if this is the front, to rotate to the right. Uh, that was also found in the lumbar spine as well. So from the lumbar spine, which is down here, right above the pelvis, this is exactly what we talk about all the time, the pelvis is oriented to the right, the lumbar spine will start to orient to the right, there will be rightward rotation of this lower thoracic spine, and then above T8, and this ex and it shows it right here in one of the diagrams, that once it gets to the T8 level, once it gets to the T8 level, it starts to curve back to the left. And that's in order to keep us straight. So again, this is normal if we're on our right leg. This is why we always talk about right stance, that you're stuck on your right leg. Your spine is just exhibiting the fact that you are stuck in right stance. The lower part, is rotated to the right, oriented to the right, and then the upper part has to counter-rotate back to the left for you to stay straight. And that is in all three of those positions, whether you're standing, supine, which is where a lot of testing occurs, the PRI testing to show, you know, especially to show uh, the ability to rotate your, your trunk and your pelvis, and also the shoulder tests and the neck tests, they occur in supine. Now, so this study is showing every single person, their lower spine was rotated to the right, okay? That's exactly what we talk about all the time. Another study showed that when there were forces, that the more arched you are, the more likely you are to rotate to the right, okay? So it said, the results of this study showed that uh, essentially, Eccentrically applied shear loads induced vertebral rotation in human as well as in porcine spinal segments. I don't know what a porcine is. At the mid thoracic and lower thoracic levels, the same levels I was talking about, significantly more vertebral rotation occurred under dorsal shear loads, so dorsal is towards the back, than under ventral shear loads, which is in the front. So dorsal, so dorsal shear loads, which would I'm interpreting it as extension. The more extended you are, the more rotated to the right you're going to be. Your rotation in a extended or with an extended spine is limited. That's just a biomechanical truth. So the more extended you are, and you can see, look how these ribs come together in the back. Let's say this is a neutral spine. See how they come closer together? Now you can't rotate. They just, the, the joints between each vertebrae and the ribs themselves prevent, lo prevent rotation in that position. And when you're testing internal rotation of the shoulders, when people have limited internal rotation, it means that they are arched, they're extended. You, ne you need to decompress that rib cage. So these ribs in the back can be on either side really can be tight when you're extended. Let's just say someone's extended on both sides. So right in the back, they're gonna be tight. But in my notes, I just always like to look through my old manuals. And one of the things, you need to ground, oh, I'm sorry, you need the ground to decompress T8. So T8 is where that most of that rotation should occur. But when you're extended, the rotation can occur. So to decompress that area, you need the ground. And I was just working with someone over the weekend and her shoes are not optimal. 
And she told me where she is, where she feels tension is right in that T8 area. And her, she got, her pelvis is neutral, because I had worked with her once before. Her pelvis is neutral, she's feeling a lot better. The problem is uh, she still has limited internal rotation of the shoulders, and I, so I know she's still extended a little bit, but until, until she can sense the ground better, you need the ground to decompress T8. The ground means pronation. So all those people who didn't think the pronation videos <laughs> were worthy of watching, you should watch them because that could be the key to everything. Pronation of the foot, the arch coming down, especially on that right side, is what gives the brain a sense of relaxation, a sense of ground. You need heel strike, arch, big toe. Heel strike, arch, big toe. When you're just on the right side, when you're just going heel strike, second or third toe, heel strike, second or third toe, and never going through pronation, your body weight always stays on the right side. You're always gonna be tight through T8. You're never gonna be able to rotate in both directions because you never are able to shift your weight to the left side completely. Until you can go from right to left, from right to left, and left back to right, you're lacking rotation by definition because you're gonna be in one position with your rib cage. It doesn't have the ability to do this. And I'm squeezing as I go to the right side. So I squeeze the right side as I go to the right side, left side comes open. Then you gotta do the opposite. Then again. And that is what allows rotation to occur as you're passing through your states of neutrality. But it doesn't mean you just have to work on the rib cage. You could work on the rib cage all day. You could work on breathing exercises all day. But if you can't sense the ground, and I see this all the time, there's no easier way to make internal rotation increase hugely than giving someone a better sense of the ground through sensing the right arch and the left heel. Why? Because it tells the body to shift to the left and it decompresses the body. Pronation decompresses the body, supination tightens it. If, you're, if, if people are walking with supinated feet, have high arches and they feel their weight on the outside of their feet, you know they're most likely gonna be extended and they can't rotate and they can't shift, they're kind of stuck in the middle and they're just stuck. So humans, the human spine, because we walk upright and we have that bigger right diaphragm the human spine will have a preference to orient to the right, and then we have to rotate back to the left above T8. So up here has to rotate from here up, has to rotate back to the left to stay straight. That's what's commonly taught. That's what we are talking about all the time. It's in the research already. That's not even, it's there, it's all there. Uh, but the idea that you need the ground, you have to experience the ground correctly through pronation of both feet proper pronation to decompress that rib cage and now you can rotate your spine again without having to resort to rotation through the lower spine, the lumbar spine, and the SI joints because that's not where you want it. But if you can't rotate your thoracic spine, if you can't rotate this area because it's extended, where are you going to rotate from? And rotation is what makes us human. It's what makes us go from side to side and forward. Without rotation, you know how hard, you know how life is like when you can't rotate your neck? It's so painful. Rotation must occur in all parts of our body. Without rotation here, you're gonna look for it here and you're gonna be in a lot of pain.